I want to stay on the offensive side of the ball and ask you about Blake Corum and whether or not you expect to see him go. We saw some footage of him warming up. Not sure if that was legitimate or that was a little eye candy to try and give uh, Ohio State something to think about. And how is the Michigan running game different without Blake Corum? How is it different with maybe more of a Donovan Edwards now that he's healthy, even though we saw much more in the passing game than the running game? And just, you know, just kind of the dynamics of, of, the, of the Michigan running game, because that's, you know, something that Ohio State fans are really talking about because they remember games one, two, and three where Michigan ran for more than 1,000 yards, and, you know, the numbers haven't necessarily been the same since getting into Big Ten play. You know, it's a good observation. Uh, I will tell you, warm-ups last week, he was cutting and going through the entire process, Blake was. Now, was he at 100%, 100% speed? That, you know, who knows? But – he was doing everything that you would normally do as part of a warm-up last week. Um, I, I, w- when you look at, and this goes right to the point I was talking about at the beginning, this is just a different level of skill talent than Michigan has had for a long, long time. I mean, when you look at, uh, this is the best running back room that Michigan has had probably since the early 90s uh, when you had Tyrone Wheatley and Ricky Powers and Jesse Johnson and Ed Davis was your fourth string back. When you look at Donovan Edwards uh, in state as a running back, he might be the best um, running back recruit the state of Michigan has produced since Tyrone Wheatley uh, in terms of national stature. Um, Blake Corum to me is a cross between J.K. JK Dobbins and Mike Hart. He he is more explosive than Mike Hart was, not quite as explosive as J.K. was, but the body type, him and J.K.'s body type, very similar. Um, And so I think that that he has a different gear and now Edwards has a, a, a vastly different gear than anybody does. But Corum has a different gear than Devion Smith and uh, Fitzgerald Toussaint and some of the other feature backs we've had. And Hassan Haskins, if you're old school, just reminds me a heck of a lot of, of Leroy Horde. I say this almost every single week. They just were wearing a lot bigger shoulder pads back then, okay? But, I mean, he's just a, he's just a truck. And he's a more explosive athlete than you think. And I think you'll see that at the combine. I don't think he'll run like 4-4. But I'll bet you on like the, the cone drills and those sorts of things at the combine, I think people will be very surprised by how good he is as an explosive athlete. He just doesn't have the extra gear that Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards do. And Corm and Edwards are both excellent receivers. In fact, I mean, 24-7 sports compared, uh, you know, Edwards to Alvin Kamara with his receiving ability. I think you saw that last week. He already he set the all-time record and it really is first significant action by a Michigan running back in terms of receptions and yards. Uh, and a lot of those were throws that he picked up off the grass and just, you know, and, and it didn't lose stride or lose any speed whatsoever. It's just, it's not as labored as, as it has been for a long time around here. And, and so the big issues with Michigan is, is philosophically. And, and that's why, it, you know, especially if if just knowing Michigan football, as I do knowing Jim Harbaugh, as I do, they're going to want to, they're going to try to do what Oregon did. They're going to see that there's a proof of concept there. They're going to see in terms of talent and roster, they're very similar teams. Uh, Oregon also has a game manager quarterback. They didn't have their Thibodeau in that game. We've got our Aiden Hutchinson. Um, And I think that, that, that Harbaugh is going to try to do complimentary football. But I also think he will do it with several wrinkles that maybe we have not shown a lot during the year um, uh, to try to see if he can get up a quick score and, and immediately try to put some pressure on Ohio State uh, from, a, from a mental standpoint after coming off a game where they you, you all just played a video game against Michigan State, obviously. And so for Michigan, this will be the first time um, that, that really since, you know, uh, you guys faced teams that had Chris Perry, Jason Avant, Braylon Edwards, that Michigan has had this level of skill position talent collectively. It's just a lot of these guys are really young and just kind of coming into their own right now. And my concern is you see a great catch from Andrew Anthony. You see a great catch from Mike Sainer still. That, that's right. their one target for the game. And right. it, they don't use all of the weapons that they have. And then Donovan Edwards shows up, not quite out of nowhere, but certainly out of nowhere in the passing game. That's 10 catches. And you're like, you should have held on to that for a week and sprung that on Ohio State. And I I do think we'll maybe see some six offensive linemen, some jumbo looks that three tight ends. I think that's pretty normal. Minnesota had some success with that. Oregon had some success with some things, uh, with some leverage. 
I think Ohio State's leverage defensively has gotten fixed a little bit, but it may is maybe it's time to test that theory again with what Michigan wants to do. But 